PR. Pro Cannabis Media. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Weed Talk News. I'm Jimmy Young from Pro Cannabis Media. And I'm Kurt Dalton from Cannabis.net. Every week, Kurt and I get together to talk about the news of the week in the cannabis industry. So all I can say, Kurt, is five for five, right? Cannabis did very well at the state level, Jimmy. Not so much at the Senate level, but if at the time of this filming, you know, Mr. Biden appears to have the clearer path to presidency, that's a win for cannabis, too. And of course, we can focus on the results of all the states. Were you surprised with the overwhelming results from the cannabis world? Maybe in some of the red states, like uh, the South Dakota, getting both passed at once. That's, you know, that's a pretty big swing from four years ago. But in general, the rest of them, they, the coffers are empty, the unemployment lines and, and the funds are out. You know, the tax revenue is needed. Just like Cuomo said, New York now needs the money. We're doing this. Especially since New Jersey is now legal. That's the last thing New York yeah. wants is one border going to New Jersey, the other border going to Massachusetts or Vermont at this point. So I think that they'll get that done. And I got to tell you, having New York and New Jersey on the East Coast, along with Massachusetts, uh, I think that'll have a pretty good impact on the cannabis industry, don't you think? Well, I think looking at even the numbers, are we up to about 42 or 43 that have some form of a program, cannabis program, and then I think 15 are rec? There's only 50 states, Jimmy. I mean, I don't know what the federal government, at some point, common sense kicks in and says, you know, 88% of our in, in vote inhabitants here now have uh, some form of legal cannabis. So maybe we should tax it and just move on. And create some jobs. As you know, there was another little item on the ballot box this week, the presidential election. And at the time of this recording, Democrat Joe Biden leads Republican President Donald Trump in the popular vote and in the Electoral College with 264 electoral votes. He only needs six more to get to the magic 270, while President Trump is at 214. Now, there are a number of contested states still counting ballots. Kurt, for cannabis advocates, though, good news so far, but a tempered result for many Democrats who had hoped for a sweeping change, as you mentioned, in the Senate and in the House. And that has not happened. No, and it's really scary that if there is a way that, uh, you know, the, the current President Trump is reelected, you're really going to see a standstill on cannabis for a while again. So got the states. That's great. Again, it's the kissing your sister metaphor. It's better than, you know, it, it is progress at small steps. Uh, but obviously the Senate would have been the crusher. If you get that and you get the presidency, you'd see it happen in 2021 with no resistance. But I still think this is going to happen where, it's going to get done in 2021. I think President Biden, assuming that's who it is, will go further than just decriminalize. That's what he's saying to get the moderate vote. He has uh, Kamala Harris as vice president, as a co-sponsor of one of the big cannabis bills. And the Republican senators who would who have to pick and choose what to veto now or block, like health care and tax issues, their states are making a lot of money from, from weed tax right now. And they really probably don't want to get in front and stop that even because their coffers are getting full. So you're really going to get Biden in there. That's, that's important right now. And, and hopefully, uh, perhaps hopefully, uh, we'll actually get a result, uh, maybe even before the weekend is out. Some are saying as much as another week, but right now it does look like one more state can come on board and push Mr. Biden, uh, Vice President Biden, over the top. But as we peer into the future, we do think, as Kurt mentioned, that this is good news for those of us in the cannabis business. More good news comes from Deborah Borchardt at the Green Market Report in New York. Deborah. Thanks, guys. While most people were focused on the news of the elections this week, the cannabis industry just kept chugging along. GW Pharmaceuticals reported total revenue of $137.1 million for the quarter ending in September. That was a big jump over last year's $91 million, and it beat the analyst estimates for $127 million. They also reported that their net losses fell to $12.2 million, and that's versus last year's net loss of $13.8 million. Terrasend announced preliminary financial results for its third quarter ending in September. They had net sales of $51 million, and that's an 8% jump sequentially and a 90% increase over last year. 
AFRIA entered into an agreement to acquire SW Brewing Company, which is one of the largest independent craft brewers in the U.S. based on volume. That deal is valued at $300 million. Now, despite cannabis beverages having very little market share in the cannabis industry, the stock market cheered and their shares jumped on the news. And that's it for this week. I'm Deborah Borchart with the Green Market Report for Weed Talk News. One interesting news item to add is the fact that while we await results from the congressional races, there is still some acceptance of cannabis in other industries. Kurt, you know what an MRB is, right? Sure do. A marijuana-related business. It's part of a lot of the banking acts as well as in the finance stuff they're talking about. And since both our companies are MRBs, one of the challenges we all face is normalcy with anything having to do with finances, the 280E tax code or retirement benefits for employees. And sure enough, I found one company that has figured out how to offer 401k plans for MRBs, asset strategy in the Boston suburb of Natick, Massachusetts. Now I talked with one of their financial experts on the next In the Weeds, John Gentry is the director of retirement at that firm. And the first hurdle for anything having to do with businesses, of course, that are either plant touching or just ancillary companies, is can you create something nationally that the feds will actually deem legal? Now, asset strategy can, but it wasn't easy. So we have the solutions, they're legal, they're in place. There are already quite a number of MRBs who have plans that are up and running and have been for quite some time. So there are solutions. Now, there are also very well-known large national providers in the industry who simply aren't comfortable uh, being first movers. Not only did we run into vendors who simply wouldn't consider it, didn't want to have the conversation, weren't even comfortable discussing it, and, you know, no way, John, not a chance. There's just too many federal um, potholes to step in, and we're going to wait until everything is absolutely safe, right? So we ran into that. Not only that, we also ran into um, directly from the MRBs where we were suggesting they should install a retirement plan, and they, they pushed back saying that it couldn't be done. And, exactly. and that's simply because they had tried and tried and tried and they finally gave up and, and uh, not realizing that the industry has evolved, the retirement plan industry has evolved to catch up to the cannabis industry so that, you know, the, re the retirement business can service the cannabis industry. And, you know, it's, it's actually a really exciting time. Wow, that's fantastic news, Jimmy, because anything to do with finance, retirement, and benefits for cannabis companies are a complete disaster right now. So that's really great news to hear that they, they have a solution for cannabis business. Absolutely. And one international news item we want to share, because we've talked about New Zealand's vote to legalize cannabis. Well, unlike the newest five states in the United States, that measure failed in New Zealand. And, and Kurt, wouldn't you know it, their newly elected prime minister, Jacinda Ardern, comes out in favor of legalization after the vote. Does that make any sense? No, and that's the scuttlebutt. We did a big story on Germany voting down recreational marijuana as well as New Zealand. And New Zealand's prime minister did not announce her affinity for or against till after the vote. So a lot of the pro-cannabis people in New Zealand are a little bit disgusted that if that's what you thought, say it up front. It might have swung the vote enough. It's, it's a little bit of a debate, but she would not. At the end, after the vote, she said she did support it. So I don't know. You know, if you're going to support something and you're elected, I don't know if you get to do that. You know, hide behind the uh, Monday morning quarterback, as we like to say. Absolutely. And by the, by the way, do you know who the U.S. ambassador to New Zealand is by any chance? John Twitchell. No. <laughs> <laughs> I took a shot. You did take a shot. I appreciate that. I thought you'd say Dennis Rodman, but that's not right either. No, <laughs> that's North no. Korea. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. I forgot. No, it's former shooting guard for the mighty jumbos of Tufts University, Scott Brown, also known as Ayla Brown's dad and a former U.S. senator. By the way, in college, uh, he was not a fan of cannabis because I actually roomed with him and at the, the basketball house for about a month at Tufts. And let's just say um, he moved out. 
Anyway, uh, basketball and weed, sports and CBD, uh, what can I tell you? Now it's time to toss to our main man, Rye Russell, with this week's main report. Rye? Rye Russell from Weed Buds Radio with your main cannabis report for Weed Talk News. Cannabis has made it to many ballots across the nation, and that includes Maine's largest city of Portland, or maybe we should call it Potland after this favorable vote. Portland residents have voted in favor of all cannabis-related topics for the past seven years, and this year was no different. The city of Portland voted to remove the cap on licenses that was originally slated for 20 stores. And in addition to that, residents also voted to reduce the mandatory buffer between licensed cannabis establishments from 250 feet to only 100. According to election data, the question to remove the cap won by six points with a total of 20,000 people, uh, individuals voting in favor of this reform. Thank you for tuning in to your main cannabis report. I'm Rye Russell from Weed Buds Radio, reporting for Weed Talk News. The DEA has introduced a new rule about CBD that has angered many members of that new industry. The DEA has drawn a line in the sand, or in this case, hemp, a warning that if your plant tests over 0.3% THC, you can be prosecuted under the Controlled Substances Act. Now, Kurt, descheduling from Schedule 1 is a priority if the results all stay the same now, right? Yeah, this is what's called hot hemp, which will push your um, your crop above the 0.3. It's based on genetics as well as how it's grown. Um, so that's going to be something that they're going to have to look at in Washington for honest mistakes. Yes, there will be people who blur the line and do it intentionally to get marijuana across the state line. Um, but it, speaking of Washington, let's go right to Phil Adams of Vote Pro Pot Podcast. Hi, this is Phil Adams from Vote Pro Podcast here with the We Talk News DC Report. Representative Earl Blumenauer of Oregon exulting over the sweep of cannabis reform initiatives in this year's election. During a Zoom call Q&A session, Blumenauer expressed his belief that the cumulative effect of the passage of medical and adult use ballot initiatives in five states will make federal legalization that much easier. This is what voters want, said Blumenauer. It is a continuation of progress that has been going on since 1996. Normal Executive Director Eric Altieri agreed saying, quote, these results once again illustrate that support for legalization extends across geographic and demographic lines. Voters approved legalization measures in Arizona, Mississippi, Montana, New Jersey, and two in South Dakota. In a related story, some DC-based cannabis industry lobbyists are downplaying expectations for federal legalization after Republicans appear to have maintained control of the US Senate. Michael Correa, a lobbyist for the National Cannabis Industry Association, expressed tempered optimism saying, quote, I thought the Senate would switch, so I'm sort of recalibrating my expectations of what we think we can get. A lobbyist for the National Cannabis Roundtable, Safira Galoob, agrees, saying that with the defeat of Senator Cory Gardner of Colorado, legalization lost a key GOP advocate. A Republican Senate without Cory Gardner, said Galoob, is an industry without a Republican champion. We've never had a Republican who is as overtly and enthusiastically fighting for us. That's the Weed Talk News DC report for this week. I'm Phil Adams from Vote Pro Podcast. And finally tonight, actress Gwyneth Paltrow is not only one of the most talented in Hollywood, she is now in the weed game. Paltrow is a celebrity investor in CAN, C-A-N-N, -N, a cannabis-infused beverage. She calls cannabis the hero ingredient of the future. Kurt, no surprise there. No, we actually did a big post, cannabis.net this week. The late crowd celebrities getting into the game and this she was included in it. The only problem I see with the THC crowd, we, I've done a lot of pieces on the mixing of alcohol. I don't think that's gonna be a hit based on what your desired result will be from that drink. But if you're gonna go THC only as a drink, it's the sticker shock. Right now, they're, depending on what state you're in, a beverage, a can, whether it comes in a bottle, is running between 7 and $9. Uh, 
uh, around five milligrams, maybe THC. So that it's a little bit of sticker shock when you go buy a six pack and, you know, if you're going to break it down by price per gram or price per, uh, for THC, that's pretty expensive right now. And if you drink all six of the cans in the six pack, does that mean you're, uh, you're ingesting, uh, 30 milligrams? You know, there's only one way to find out, Jimmy, and the cameras are rolling. I think this sounds like a show. <laughs> Maybe down the road sometime, Kurt. Great <laughs> to talk with you as always. That'll do it for Weed Talk News for this week. I'm Jimmy Young. And I'm Kurt Dalton with Cannabis.net. Remember, it's a whole new world of weed out there. Use it responsibly. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. We Talk Now, We Talk News, and In the Weeds are all available on most major podcast distributors like iTunes, Spotify, Google Play, and our friends at clnsmedia.com and our flagship, cannabis.net. So subscribe, share, and like our videos on all the social media networks out there, including LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, The Weed Tube, and YouTube. Weed Talk and In the Weeds are two productions of Pro Cannabis Media supported by Revolutionary Clinics, one of the top medical cannabis dispensaries in the Massachusetts area. Now with three locations in Greater Boston, two in Cambridge and one on Broadway in Somerville. Rev Clinics has a patient first mission. They will customize your needs as a medical patient with the proper titration and combination of strains, flavors, and products. Rev Clinics, where the patient comes first. We are Pro Cannabis Media.